Today, the Zoon is nothing more than forgotten. It sits on the shelves of eBay, your older slash younger brother or sister's attic. I guess it also could have just ended up in this warehouse from Indiana Jones. But why did the Zoon fail? It seemed like a fine competitor to the iPod, and Microsoft already had a fan base of people that didn't like Apple and preferred Windows, so what happened? Well, let's take a look back and see. It is the early 2000s, Windows is dominating the PC market by a huge margin, and Apple has made a comeback after its huge decline in the 90s, thanks to Microsoft helping them out by buying shares in Apple. And also with the help of founder Steve Jobs, Apple was getting back on track with things like the iBook, iMac, and the iPod. But especially the iPod. And at Microsoft, they recently released the Xbox, and they were seeing a huge success already. And after seeing the success of the iPod, Microsoft believed that there could be a competitor. Microsoft teamed up with Toshiba and transformed the Gigabeat S, a music player developed by Toshiba, into a totally new product. And this is when Project Argo began, run by Jay Arold, who was also the Xbox 360's overseer. And on July 11th of 2006, Engadget broke the news that Microsoft's new music player would be called the Zune and the Zune would officially release on November 14th of 2006. There was also a software similar to iTunes dedicated for the Zune, just called Zune. The second generation of Zune added a touch-sensitive button. Also, the interface for the Zune software got a friendlier and more improved interface. It would release on November 13th of 2007. To compete with the rise of applications, Zune began getting games onto the third version. You would also be able to connect to the internet, and get ebooks from Audible. Huh, not sponsored. This third generation of the Zune would release somewhere in September of 2008. So by now, the current design of the Zune was not really competing well with something like the iPod Touch with a multi-touch screen. So Microsoft knew that they had to give it one more shot. And this time they went all in and released Zune HD in 2009. But unfortunately for Microsoft, it was already too late. And on October 3rd of 2011, the Zune HD would be discontinued. And a year later, on October 16th of 2012, the Zune software was discontinued. And that same day, it was replaced with Xbox Music, with the release of Windows 8, but then in 2015, with the release of Windows 10, it was replaced with Groove. Which makes a lot more sense, I don't know why it was called Xbox Music. So what exactly happened to the Zune? It never was successful. Well, let's compare both of the models that were released in 2006. The iPod from 2006 had 30 gigabytes, while the Zune had 30 gigabytes, and the iPod costed $250, while the Zune costed $250. So what was the difference? They both have the same storage size and they basically both do the same thing, there's not really much that makes them different. Actually, the Zune did have a feature where you could send music to your friends, but other than that, why did it fail? And the answer is, one is an iPod and one is a Zune. And that is actually the main difference. One is an iPod and one is a Zune. Because the Zune released in 2006, the iPod already had a 5 year head start with its reputation. It was all based on the brand and it was seen as the cooler device. As time went on, the Zune became a laughing stock because everyone liked the iPod, and for the most part everyone didn't like the Zune. What made it even worse was that everyone was beginning to make fun of it in pop culture. The Zune. 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 And now that I think about it, I stood in front of a case of iPods and I bought a Zune. <laughs> Bring me the secret of Apple, and I'll give you enough Microsoft gift certificates to fill a thousand Zunes! Hey Bill, would you help me program my Zune? Oh wait, I have an iPod, like the rest of the world. What? It even made its way into the political world. When Barack Obama was still president-elect Barack Obama, there was a report that he was using a Zune while exercising. This came out to be allegedly false, although it still claimed that he actually did use one, but it's just a device. And this is definitely not the first time that a company has tried to enter some sort of new territory with hopes of growing in it, and has failed because the product is just not cool. And all throughout its life, the iPod has held a huge percentage of the market. And in terms of percentage, it's always been in the 70s, which is a lot. While the Zune was only in the single digits, to the point where it only owned 1% of the market. And yes, there are success stories. I think the biggest one when we compare it to Apple has to be Samsung, but this was during the time that Apple was losing its innovation and falling behind after its loss of Steve Jobs. 
Even though today Apple is still one of the biggest companies in the world and sells tons of iPhones, it doesn't have the same market share that it did with the iPod. Anyways though, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one. Zoom. Zoom. Zoom.